And lady. Y yes. Why don't you turn that radio back on? I don't mind. I've learned about October 28. It's what you had to do. What do you want now? Have patience. I've almost reached the light. This rules him out. Someone else was inside the house. I'm not going back, not before I'm convinced that was Victoria who disappeared into the woods. I should look around, try to find her. Madam? Hello there. Uh, please, take a... Do I know you? I apologize. Madam? Oh, it's you. You know, I'm still asking myself who you are. We've never met before. I feel like we did. You remember me. My name's Ida. No, madam, I've never been in this town before. <coughs> you all right? How should I ask about Victoria? Where is everyone? Everyone who? This square was brimming last night. Where's everyone today? Uh, sorry. You, you got me confused. I'm still convinced I've seen you before. But if I did, then... You know, that is a strange question you're asking because in this town, everyone knows where everyone else is. And where would that be? In the church or behind their own walls and windows. <laughs> you really are a stranger. Incredible. But at least you're here now. It's the outsiders that never visit us who are at a loss. Did you see the big fire last night? Oh, that's what I mean. Who could miss such a beauty? Those people, their gazes and voices. Horrible. And did you see the people? Everyone spoke and breathed as one spirit. It was... I simply adore the town's day. That's what you've been expecting to see again today, right? But I'm afraid it, it only happens once a year. Actually, today I was hoping to find a woman, but since you're mentioning last night, let me just ask you first. Father Imre had no idea into what kind of place Victoria was about to take me. This could be my only chance before leaving to get some details about the town for him. So? I'm, I'm listening. What about these masks you have here? The executioner masks? What about them? Last night, every single person was wearing one. Oh, because they're mandatory. Every inhabitant gets one the day they are born. Why? Because there are still people who believe these masks repel, ward off evil beings from one soul. What's the meaning of the robe and the bells around its waist? The inhabitants of this town regard themselves as Kotar's disciples. And so, they dress like the Seven Ones. You saw the grotesques on that building? It's them. 
They are the sacred seven disciples of Yvonne Koshar. But why was everyone dressed like that last night? What does it mean? The appearance of the robe strikes fear into evil beings, while the noises of the bells tortures them. At least that's what they believe. No one's allowed to take part in the ritual on the town's day without a mask and a robe. And no one's allowed not to take part because it glorifies the life of our patron saint. Who are the evil beings you mentioned? I don't know. I, I guess anyone can be evil, right? But if they are really among us, then they are in hiding. Last night, you were the only person on the square without the ornaments. You didn't participate in the ritual? That's right. I never participate. It's too bizarre for me. Everyone respects that, so they allow me not to take part. You believe a mask can protect you? A mask and a strong faith in God. That's what people truly believe for centuries already. The things I said could sound strange. I guess even scary for a stranger. But believe me, I have never felt or seen anything but love in Saveti Gotar. I don't believe you. I needed just one night to feel and see quite the opposite. Wait a minute. How do you know I didn't wear any ornaments? I saw you talking to a woman. The one I said I was looking for earlier. All right. Can I help you with that. Did you see her today? Uh, who is she? I talked to a lot of people yesterday, and many didn't show their faces. She's scrawny, has short brown hair, and wears glasses, and she wore a coat. So just like you, and not a local. Hmm. Wait, you mean Victoria? I don't know. It could be. Did you see her? I did, yesterday. Why? What about today? You sure she didn't pass by? <coughs> I... I don't... I don't know. You know, as soon as no one's around, I, I tend to get lost in this book of mine. But wait a minute. If Victoria passed by, I I'd know that. Believe me. She would have said hi, at least. I have a feeling she's lying. She's a good friend of mine. Like I said, a friend? They talked only for a half an hour last night. Why are you looking for her? I wanted to talk to her last night, but then she got lost in the crowd. Oh, but I still don't understand. Why do you want to talk to her? Do you know her? Maybe I do. I I'm not sure. I need to... <coughs> <coughs> you should have someone take a look at you. I need to... <coughs> How do you breathe in this place? Why? I think it's the fog. It's like it's trying to grind my lungs to pieces. That's horrible and strange. But I guess it's a good thing you're just visiting, then. The fog never leaves this valley. I was trying to say I need to find that woman and talk to her, and then I can leave this place forever. <laughs> it still bothers me. If you're just visiting, where have I seen you before? Maybe I should ask for directions. If Victoria is somewhere around here, I don't know where to look for her. Where could a stranger possibly go in this town? I thought you said you wanted to leave. Oh, sorry. You want to find Victoria? Well, I don't know. I, I guess you could. This is a small town, but very old, ancient. There are a lot of interesting places one might visit. If she's still here, and if she's sightseeing right now, then, then I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. Explore the town. Just stay away from the forest and the mountain. Why? For one thing, you won't find Victoria there, if she didn't ignore my advice. 
But also... Listen. Can you guess what it is? Uh, not sure. Uh, you tell me. It's a nocturnal sound made by insects. Easy, isn't it? Uh, don't be surprised. No one ever knew the answer. Maybe because it's easier to lie. I don't know. Anyway, years back, after I started working in her little family shop, I heard this sound for the first time. And it never went away. It never stops. Not, not for a moment, day or night. Not that I'm complaining, really. It helps me block the outside world and stay positive. But it, isn't it weird? How's this sound related? Why should we stay away from the forest and the mountain? There's a decree in force. It forbids anyone to visit the forest of Carcassonne or the mountain of Utev. A decree? The proof of faith. Every person, no matter whether being a local or a visitor, must abide by its words or suffer the consequences. But if you ask me, I don't know the reason they're forbidden. Because I keep asking myself, if the forest is really dead, like they say it is, then where's the sound coming from? It's not a radio signal. You must have it recorded on tape, then. No, wh what? This radio doesn't even have a slot for that. Then it's a radio signal. What else could it be? Look behind you, in the far distance. Why should I? <coughs> Just trying to explain. Focus your sight well enough. There behind the clouds of fog, you'll see a massive rock. That rock is just part of the insurmountable wall that surrounds the town. So you're trying to suggest it's not possible for the sound to be coming from a place beyond. I doubt that. At Zutav, the mountain I mentioned before, it devours anything that tries to come our way. And this town doesn't have stations of any kind, because we're stuck in the past. So it can't be a local radio signal either. I'm convinced the source of this sound is located somewhere deep inside the forest. What makes you think that? I feel like I can trust you. You know, I often visit the forest to find these cheerful insects. So far, I haven't been able to locate any of them. And I haven't seen any animals there either. But if you ask me, Carcassa is far from being dead. It's just a different kind of energy, that's all. A different kind of energy? I don't know, but I've been there and nothing bad happened to me. So how do you explain that? Maybe it did, but she just doesn't know it yet. I should keep away from her. She's strange and didn't help me at all. Madam, I have to leave now. Already? I really have to go. Wait, you, you didn't tell me your name. Maybe it'll help me remember where have I seen you. Madam, who I am is irrelevant. I just want to be left alone. Excuse me. What should I do now? Maybe I should just follow Nikolai. Eventually he could, he should, lead me to Victoria. The executioner masks the crowd was wearing last night. They look genuinely old and terrifying. An ornamental tree placed inside the pot in the form of a severed woman's head. Morbid. Repulsive, shabby and dirty, intimidating. The crosses were manually engraved into the bells. These torture chairs and bells are really something. 
created faithfully down to the smallest detail. It's a miracle this thing is still working. Nikolai hasn't moved an inch. He's still standing in front of that handicapped man. Why is he doing that? A shadow has appeared. Again. What shadow? Where? A shape in the darkness. An apparition? A man. He's doing nothing. Just staring at me from above. Then go for the light. Save yourself. I'm close. The threshold is not that far away. This is taking an eternity. You should find a way to push him out of there. Wherever he is. Strange lamp. It has an unusually long hook. Maybe it has something to do with the light Moises trying to reach. What happened? Where's the light? <laughs> what have you done? I apologize. But something had to be done to get you talking. You monster! Why? I just quenched a flame. Actually, you just mangled a worm. <laughs> that wasn't a mere flame. And this is not just a lamp. What's so special about this lamp? You people wouldn't believe what I've seen and felt in that damned place. But I must not forget. I have to go down there each day and relive everything all over again. That flame was already dying out. I just put an end to its misery. Misery? It didn't cease to shine since that fateful day. Not for a moment. And then you show up and decide it is time. That flame saved my life that day. And has kept my hope alive ever since. Hey! You still there? I just remembered. Come here! Quickly! It is time for you to leave, Nicolay. No. Let him stay. I want to keep my word. You pathetic, crawling thing. What are you doing? He's part of the herd that left you rotting down there. He needs to learn the truth. Mostly about himself. You don't know anything about me. You're not a deacon. And you really need your pills for the pain. You don't need them to actually curb the fear. No, I don't. Now, tell me what do you want from me? You have to behead someone. What were you doing at that window? So you did see that woman today? What? You yelled you remembered. Do you remember that she was here today? Where did she go? Oh, no, it's, it's not that. I, I've already told you. I, I haven't seen her. I, I'm sorry. But now, I remember where the two of us met before. I should leave, madam. Wait. You, you said you've never been here before, I know. But you have. We've met in Carcassa way too many times to make me forget your face and voice. 
Like I said, I've never been in this town before. You did. You came to me in my dreams. The dreams I have always start the same way. I find myself in the woods, daring not to move. I've just seen something horrifying, but my mind refuses to tell me what it is. I, I tremble with fear and groan in despair. At this point, I either succeed to get out, or more often than not, I am staying trapped in the agony of my unconscious mind. Why are you telling me this? I dread to dream. And it's been like that for years now. But, but sometimes the agony is replaced by happiness. It happens when in the middle of the forest blackness, you appear, flying noisily towards me. As an angel? Ah, oh, moth! What? A strange moth, I'd say, with two faces. The one on the back side of the head looks just like a human skull, I guess. The moth is a symbol of wickedness. That couldn't be me. You're either lying or insane. Oh, no. I, I didn't say. I'm Brother Benedict. I, I don't understand the meaning of the skull, but you are not an evil appearance in my dream. You're a good being. I'm a servant of God, the Order of St. Paul, the First Hermit. My fear and despair dissolve into joy and hope when you appear. You always help me get through the night. I can't stand it here anymore. Just a moment. Benedict? You said your name is Benedict. I didn't say my name. I, I heard it. You... I don't have anything more to say to you. You are victorious, brother. I am. Why haven't you said so before? Because I don't know you, and I don't trust you. You know, now I might have an idea where your sister is. So you were lying to me the whole time? I knew it. I didn't know who you were either, so I had to lie. I honestly haven't seen her today. But last night she seemed obsessed with the idea of going to the lake today. Why would she do that? Mere sightseeing. Which I found strange, because she already knew there's nothing to see there. Maybe she just liked the view. How do I get there? Take a left from here, then just follow the path through the woods. It's a short walk. There's an old man selling fish. You can ask him if he saw her. His name's Arson. And since you're going to talk to him, could you do me a favor? To, to fetch something for me? Just tell him I sent you for Friday's meal. With everything going on yesterday, I completely forgot about it. Why would I do that? Why didn't you go earlier today? Why don't you go now? I can't leave the shop. I'm waiting for my father. He's gonna be here any time now. No promises, madam. It's just one fish. And if you do this for me, I'll show you my gratitude by giving you a brochure of the town. I don't need your gratitude. Like I mentioned before, as soon as I find Victoria, I'm gonna leave this place forever. No, you won't. The brochure contains a detailed map of the town and its surroundings. Uh, trust me, you'll find it useful. You'll see. Should I go to the lake? I don't trust her. I could just wait for Nikolai to come out. Looks deserted. I don't see a reason to go there now, if only to take the alleyway that leads to the train station, and I can't do that without Victoria. Oh, and one last thing. 
How was your visit to the Grimolda Castle? I've completely forgot about the exhibition. Victoria bought three masks from me, you know? Why? Because she had to. No one's allowed to enter the castle without a mask. I mean, why are you asking? We were dead tired and just didn't make it there. So you don't even know what happened? Come closer. Someone fell from the castle's roof into the nearby chasm. Why are you telling me this? I'm worried. I thought you were there. After this happened, no one was allowed to leave the castle for hours. It was a nightmare. People were shrieking and crying into the darkness of the halls and corridors. I already told you we didn't make it there. You know, there are places in this town you can't visit without a mask. Grimalda is one of them. I don't follow. It's one thing to visit and leave. It's another to stay trapped for hours in such a place. Then I thought... What? You thought what? You sure Victoria didn't go? Honestly, I'm not sure. She did not. Why? We missed the exhibition, fell asleep the moment we arrived at the house. I just... I... I think I saw her alone on the square later, after you left. That's impossible. She didn't leave the house, and even if she did, that doesn't mean she went to the castle. Only one person had slept in that bed upstairs, and I don't think that was her. Did she give you the mask she bought for me? She didn't, but that doesn't mean she visited the castle. You know, some witnesses saw the fall, but... She's around here somewhere, and she'll take me out of this town soon. But it was so dark they couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman who fell. They must have found the body. Did they search for it? They only found parts. Badly disfigured, unidentifiable. So what are you telling me? Where do you think Victoria is? They also found the head. Didn't you just say the person was unidentifiable? The face is skinless. It was torn apart before the falls. They don't know the identity yet. Who would do such a horrible thing? Someone inhuman. This was devil worship and witchcraft at work. Witchcraft? How can you be so sure? The authorities believe that person was a woman. A scrawny woman with short brown hair. Wait, it's a woman? What are you trying to tell me here? Who is she? And I'm sure it was devil worship and witchcraft because she wore a mask above her skinless face. But it wasn't an executioner's mask. No, it, it was. The yellow mask. We believe in you. You've come this far, to the end of St. Quatar, the Yellow Mask. But this is just a prologue of the story we want to tell, the beginning of a long and dark journey of change, full of twists and fateful choices. For us, the storytellers that gifted you this free prologue, your support is crucial. Help us to tell the story of St. Quatar. Support us on Kickstarter. We fear nothing, for you are with us.